For quite a long time, Donald Trump has bragged without any potential repercussions about a subject near his heart and self-image. His total assets. I look better assuming I'm valued at $10 billion than if I'm valued at $4 billion, he once said while questioning his positioning on the Forbes tycoon's list. In a legal dispute, he recognized that when it came to portraying the worth of his image, I'm really exact. And when he depicted his overconfident style in his book, The Art of the Deal, he picked an expression that has followed him from that point forward. Honest poetic overstatement. Yet, presently, Trump will confront inquiries having sworn to tell the truth about that example of frivolity in an examination that might shape the fate of his family land business. The previous president and his oldest little girl, Ivanka Trump, are supposed to be addressed in the not-so-distant future by the New York State Head Legal Officer's Office, which has been directing a common examination concerning whether he and his organization deceitfully swelled the worth of his resources. His child, Donald Trump Jr., was evaluated last week, as indicated by individuals with information regarding the situation. The principal legal officer, Letitia James, has contended in court papers that fake or diluting strategic approaches ruled at the Trump Organization for a really long time, and she has said her specialists should scrutinize the Trumps to figure out who was mindful. Trump contended energetically to stay away from a meeting, yet an appointed authority requested him to confront addressing, and examiners will try to inspire answers that could uncover whether he endorsed any fake valuations of his inns, golf clubs and different resources. Indeed, even a solitary slip-up in the statement could be expensive for Trump, who is likewise the focal point of a different criminal examination concerning similar issues. Albeit that examination by the Manhattan Lead Prosecutor's Office lost energy early this year, investigators are intending to audit Trump's responses, and any implicating proclamations or awkward remarks could reinvigorate it. Trump has criticized James' request as a politically persuaded witch chase and denied all bad behavior. The previous president, who is no more peculiar to being removed, will introduce strange difficulties and potential open doors for James' legal counselors, as per accounts from individuals who have addressed him, having sworn to tell the truth before, and a survey of almost 12 statements. He rushes to fight with his inquisitors and frequently battles to limit himself when let a legal counselor know that her inquiries were exceptionally idiotic. The meetings will stamp the last phase of James' three-year common request, teeing up one of the most noteworthy choices of her residency whether to sue Trump and his organization. James, confronting the probability that a claim would bring a few additional long stretches of legitimate fighting without triumph guaranteed, could initially seek after settlement talks with the previous president's legal counselors to remove a swifter monetary payout. Assuming that James brings a claim and Trump loses at preliminary, an appointed authority could force more extreme monetary punishments on the previous president and even limit his business tasks in New York all amidst a 2024 official mission that he has long implied he will join. James, a Democrat running for reappointment, plays expected the part of Trump's main bad guy in New York. What's more, lately, she has embraced a curiously forceful lawful methodology, including convincing an appointed authority, Arthur F. Engerin, to censure the previous leader of court as she combat to acquire his archives and declaration. The statements, while a triumph for James, probably won't convey a conclusive evidence. Trump could affirm that he appointed the valuation of his resources for representatives and that he was not profoundly involved, or he could conjure his protected right against self-implication, declining to respond to certain inquiries at any rate. However, individuals acquainted with Trump's way to deal with fights in court communicated question that he would stay silent. Dissimilar to in criminal cases, a jury in common cases like the one James could bring can draw a negative derivation from a respondent's refusal to address questions. Furthermore, assuming Trump depends on his Fifth Amendment honor as his child, Eric Trump did many times in a meeting with James' office quite a while back that could bring up issues about the thing he may be trying to stow away and give new grain to his political rivals. Trump himself has criticized observers for summoning their Fifth Amendment privileges, once commenting that, you see the mob takes the Fifth, and that, assuming you're guiltless, for what reason would you say you are taking the Fifth?